The year was 179. Today's story follows a young man named Smalls. Well, a young boy named Smalls, age three. Despite being only three years old, this kid had ideas. This kid was ambitious. Why'd they call him Smalls, you may ask? Because he was small, of course. It's not that hard to figure out. Now, being a three-year-old is already pretty tough. But being an extra small three-year-old, people would sometimes accidentally step on him. But hey, that's just life, he thought to himself. No one said it was going to be fair. Like I said, he was very mature for being three years old. Smalls was born in a busy village called Tone Deaf Town. Why is it called that? It's foreshadowing. We'll get to it. He spent his days running along through the grass, hanging out at the beach in his beach house. Well, not his beach house, his parents' beach house. Who are his parents? I don't know. I didn't think that far. He has parents, though. They're somewhere. Despite its struggles, being three years old did come with its own privileges. Didn't have a job, didn't have any responsibilities. Almost no one paid attention to him. He pretty much just wandered the island all day, every day. His favorite thing to do, however, was go down to the beach and listen to the frogs. Sing their little songs. A little ribbit here, a little ribbit there. Sort of a rhythmic fashion. Really stuck out to him. Sometimes he would sing along to the beat of their ribbits. Sometimes he would just ribbit along. Yeah, pretty weird kid, huh? But hey, he wasn't hurting anybody. He was just passionate about music, even though he didn't realize it was music. Because he had never heard of music. Because, like I mentioned earlier, he was born in Tone Deaf Town. These people are the opposite of musical. Wait a minute, Smalls is a girl. Eventually, she turned eight years old, which as we've established here, eight years old is prime time to start working. Unfortunately, she went through a growth spurt, and became ugly. Reminds me of myself. She got her first job working on the farm, harvesting wheat. But she didn't like working in the wheat fields. It was too quiet, there was no rhythm to it. So she quit her job and decided maybe she'd join the army. Maybe that would be good. They do these sort of marching drills where they all kind of shout in a rhythmic fashion and she thought, hey, maybe that would be good for me. Whatever she wanted to do, she knew it was gonna be musical. Even though she didn't know what music was, she knew she liked it. She liked rhythm. She liked sound. She liked melodies. Unfortunately, the army wouldn't let her join because she was too small. And uh, you had to be big and tough. She was feeling pretty sad about being turned down by the army and decided to go to her favorite spot. As she approached her favorite spot, she heard a familiar sound. Someone else, a human, ribbiting along to the sounds of the frogs. As soon as she arrived, that person left, the, however. Probably embarrassed. She was very curious. She had never seen anyone else do that. In fact, she was pretty embarrassed about it herself. So she wanted to know more. Eventually, she caught up with the ribbiter. And she said, Hey, I heard you over there making frog noises with the other frogs. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You must have me confused with someone else. No, 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 you don't understand. I do that too. What? You do that too? I thought I was a weirdo. You are a weirdo. But we're both weirdos in the same way. What's your name, by the way? My name's Biggie. And thus began a beautiful friendship between Biggie and Smalls. They didn't know exactly what it meant yet, but they knew. They were both very different than the rest of the people in their village. But they were both very different in the same way. And that meant they were connected. Years passed in Tone Deaf Town. Biggie and Smalls became adults. They tried their various jobs, they made different friends, but they both knew, deep down, they had some potential. At this point now, they were both in their early 20s, and they wanted to try something out. They'd been practicing their rhythm, they'd been learning how to sing, although they didn't know what it was called, and they decided they wanted to leave town to pursue this dream, although they still weren't quite sure what the dream was. They headed on down to a neighboring village, the trombone zone. They looked around, and they noticed something. These people were making sound as they worked their job. They were like humming. They were singing. There was a guy playing some weird instrument in the middle of town. He was just blowing air on it and it was producing the strangest of sounds. But they kind of liked it and they wanted to know more. Excuse me, sir. What on earth is that sound? Oh, I'm just playing the saxophone. Have you never heard of one of these? You must not be from around here. Yeah, no, we're from Tone Deaf Town. Tone Deaf Town? Is that a real place? Yeah. Why did you call it that? That's actually a good question. I don't know why they would call it that, because they don't even know what tone is, so they don't know that they're tone deaf. That doesn't make any sense to me either. Well, anyway, welcome to our little town here. We're very musical over here. Musical? What's that? You don't know what music- oh yeah, yeah, that's right, Tone Deaf Town. You know, like, when you make sound and you make your voice go up and down? That's called singing. Singing? 
Can you teach us more about this music thing you speak of? I've got a lot going on in my life right now, and I don't really feel like taking the time to teach two strangers about what music is. That seems like a tedious and undesirable use of my time. Okay, we get it. Biggie and Smalls returned home with their newfound knowledge that this music thing was real, and they knew that that was something they wanted to pursue. They went home, and they practiced. They would beat sticks on barrels to make a drum-like sound. They would shout in a rhythmic fashion. They would move their voice up and down while speaking. It sounded honestly pretty horrible, but they were learning. They knew they wanted to share this discovery with their friends and family at their hometown. After years of practicing, they were now hitting their 30s, and it was time to share their gift with the town. They set up a DJ stand by the town square and began to play what they were now referring to as music, or their fire mixtape. A collection of sounds they had created themselves and recorded on some recording gear that they had borrowed from that guy that refused to help them earlier. He didn't know they borrowed it, but we don't need to get into that. They played their sounds for the town square, and the town square reacted, well, badly. Really badly, in fact. The sound was driving them mad? They didn't know what these new emotions were. Hey, maybe it's not loud enough, Biggie said to Smalls. Good thinking. Let's turn it up. That was not the problem, believe it or not. In fact, the problem was that no one wanted to hear it to begin with, but they kept turning it louder and louder. Man, what a huge success. Everyone loves our music. We should share this with the world. And so they did. They cranked their music up so loud that everyone in the whole town could hear it. And hear it they did. They made sure everyone knew about their newfound talents. And I use the word talent very very loosely. The town started to burst into flames. People were dying everywhere. They couldn't really see very well over their DJ stand. Well, at least Smalls couldn't. I don't know what Biggie's excuse is. Oh, that's right. She's short-sighted. So from their view, it seemed like everyone was enjoying it. They could smell smoke from over their DJ stand, but Biggie joked that it must be because their mixtape is so fire. Unfortunately, it was actually the smell of their homes burning. Eventually, their show was over, and they decided to go ask the town what they thought of their new music. Unfortunately, the town was a little bit busy, and they couldn't really get a straight answer from someone. Everyone was just confused as to where the sound came from, and didn't even realize it was Biggie and Smalls. Biggie and Smalls decided their new career path was a huge success, and they were ready to head down to Successville, where they had always dreamed of going. I just didn't mention it earlier because I honestly forgot about it, but it's been there this whole time. At this point, they had matching outfits, and they referred to themselves as Biggie Smalls, the DJ duo. They couldn't wait to share this with Successville, and hopefully move there. Biggie and Smalls arrived at Successville, trying to get the attention of the locals, but unfortunately they were all busy, with a storm going on. I guess this happened a lot. All this sand, all this flat land, they would get these sort of wind storms, and it would happen from time to time, but unfortunately, it overshadowed their arrival. It was a little frustrating that no one would pay attention to them, and they got a little discouraged. They had traveled all this way to meet the people of Successville. So you know what they did? They set up their DJ stand right in the middle of town square, because they don't ever learn their lesson. They couldn't wait to play their newest song for the locals. The problem was only like two people actually stopped by to listen to them and they wanted the attention of the whole town, but that dang storm going on in the sand was still keeping everyone else busy. And they wanted the attention. They traveled all this way, and by golly, they were going to get it. So Biggie Smalls decided to do something controversial. They decided to make a song about the sandstorm. They played the song for the locals, and the locals didn't really know it was about the sandstorm because honestly, it just sounded like noise. But Biggie and Smalls were determined to get results. So they kept turning their music louder, and louder, and louder. They couldn't see out of their DJ stand, so they couldn't see what the music was doing. But the amount of sound that they were playing was actually kicking up a lot of sand, causing some sandstorms. In fact, it was actually killing a lot of people, and actually wrecking the town of Successville. But from within their DJ stand, all they could really hear was a lot of shouting. And they thought, cheering, probably. Everyone must love the music. So they kept playing it, and they kept playing it as loud as possible. Everyone loves us. They thought this must be what crowd surfing is like. They decided their music was a huge success, and it was time to go home and share it with their hometown. They had shared their talent with Successville. Time to share it with the rest of the world. And that's the story of Biggie and Smalls, the dynamic DJ duo. Thanks for watching, everyone. I know you like happy endings. And this is probably the happiest of them all. Chase your dreams. Share your dreams with others. You never know. You might just change the world.